What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Awesome Cast. I'm your top gun, Sorgatron. We're here uh, to talk about technology and everything <laughs> awesome in the world. You like that? You like that? Does that make you goose uh, or oh, ice man? Oh, oh, too soon. Oh, anyways, uh, yeah, this is the Awesome Cast where we talk about tech, where we talk about everything awesome going on in the news and uh, and and so for some reason Nebraska. With me, as usual, is uh, Rob De La Creta. What state are you in, Rob? Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm in uh, uh, Louisiana is where I am. Oh, there you yeah. go. I'm in uh, New Orleans. I'm, uh, there's a there's some water that way, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> right behind that wall. I got you. I got just you. behind this wall is a pretty and, and just so I can check water. on your title. Are you drinking milk? Uh, ooh, no, I actually let's see. I have a selection here. I have. <laughs> Because I'm in New Orleans, I have some wine, some vino. Um, I know how to party when I travel. I have some Cafe all, du Monde coffee. These are all an arm's length, too. Yeah, all right. I've got uh, Welch's cranberry juice. That's because he's sitting and on the bed. No, I'm, I'm at the desk. I have an amazing hotel room. I'll tell you what. I have... This is ridiculous. I did not pay more for this room than a regular room. I have a full refrigerator, a dishwasher... A range with a with the stove, and the Damn. separate room over there, back there. That's my bedroom. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> and I'm sitting in my living room, which is adjacent to my dining room. Holy shit, dude! <laughs> Rob Rob has a has an apartment, a studio apartment. Does he? I do. <laughs> no, 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 no. He has he has an actual one bedroom apartment. Uh, yeah, so I have a legitimate one bedroom one room. apartment. They are hooking you up down there in uh, New Orleans. But yeah, I'm in New Orleans, uh, eating a lot of pork. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pork. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've been to the butcher three times this week. I've seen your Instagrams. I yes. thought I saw a butcher one. So my uh, my palate hates you right now. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> last night I had uh, last night I went to the butcher and I had uh, broccoli casserole with a turkey sandwich oh. and uh, and some lager, not Yingling lager. It's a uh, some kind of some other Portland thing, but yeah, that's my story. Yay. Awesome. On the couch again is, oh, not Josh Sager. Whoa. How about Chachi? How <laughs> I about am, Chachi? I am Chachi not, says. I am not Josh net. Sager. No, you are not uh, Josh the Jackhammer Sager. <laughs> <laughs> wow. As we established last week. How you doing, Chachi? I'm all right. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. You know, you would think you would uh, get me some better combinations, being that I'm the number one watched program <laughs> On the Sorgatron Apparently Media you platform. Are. Apparently you are, according to the numbers this month. Uh, I, I, we'll, we'll get you some Rob, Rob level accommodations there. I need to uh, I need to be involved in the meetings when we discuss Rob the levels. numbers. Hey, yes. <laughs> I, I got 25,000 hits last month, sir. What? Dang. So yeah, that that stuff important is ridiculous. Stuff. You can bow down. Apparently, nothing not tell me that they're they're not real that we can tell. So yeah, I, we're, I, we're trying to. Every time Sorg tells me my my hits, I tell him he's wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well, he uses stronger language anyway. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm just waiting for the day that we all get an email. Be like, guys, guys, I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, really funny. Because I mean, just don't count those numbers at all. Because I mean, <laughs> honestly, like I I'm gonna keep doing the show regardless. Yeah, but. I don't like watching me. <laughs> so okay. there's no way that 25,000 people last month watched my show. You never know. Yeah, I think it was the hand turkeys that put you over the top. Yeah. Everybody does love a good hand turkey. That's true. <laughs> and you know who loves a good hand turkey? That's AJ. <laughs> rub, rub. Virtual <laughs> potholes. Oh, is... <laughs> I'm just a hand turkey. I'm not an actual person. How you it's doing? okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? How you doing, AJ? Uh-oh. Oh, and we lost his audio. Oh, no. oh, oh no. God, I'm back. There I'm he back. is. There he is. I'm I think fine. He, Hi. Hi, I'm fine. I, he got caught in a mute button. So. I did. Nope. <laughs> so we'll go right into uh, he's, he's occupied. We'll let, it, we'll let him be for a bit. Hey, we got to we get, get a little bit of fan interactions throughout the week. First, thanks to uh, Nero, uh, at Nero online, uh, on the Google Plus page. Uh, for uh, let me know that the feed was screwed up last week. Please tell me when that happens, guys, because I don't know. Um, so shout out to him. Also, WPAJ Juggalo John on Twitter sent us uh, 
You Can't Run from the Cop Car of the Future is over on Gizmodo. Um, pull it up here. That's the wrong thing. There we go. Uh, police cars of the very near future will be smart to the point of being scary, equipped with eight cameras, voice commands, intelligible incredibly intelligent software and LTE radios, you're not going to get away. So, um, I'm not seeing this locally. Have you, are you guys? What? Uh, these, Wasn't listening. These high-tech uh, cop cars? Is it the white, Is it like the one from uh, the new Star Trek movie, where it's just a hovercraft and a robot rides it? That could be fun. Yeah. If it's not, then I don't care. Okay. If it still has <laughs> wheels, I just don't care. I want my flying cars. What about you? Are we, are we talking about an autonomous vehicle, or, or what are we? we doing? I don't know what's going on. I um, didn't read the article. I think, I think it's just uh, how how rigged they are uh, uh, with technology here coming up. Well, you know that's good. It helps them stop people who are trying to kill me. <laughs> Who's trying to kill you? Everyone. The, the, feder- the federales are they trying to kill you? Autonomous vehicles? They're trying to kill you. Yes, they're out to get me. Coming up at five, are autonomous vehicles trying to kill you and your family? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, we're going to get some commentary for, uh, from, via- from the oh, background. Man. That's going to be awesome. That was great. <laughs> awesome. So <laughs> tell me. The great voice from nowhere says no. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, uh, CDs are apparently dying. When's the last time you bought a CD? Uh, yeah, no. Right. No. AJ bought one like last week, but that's I bought I got one this morning. Because he's weird. That's, he did, he did. I so, got one this morning. So what's, here's, here's the one I got last week, Mega Ran ten. Yeah, he's weird. <laughs> there it is. So what's going on with uh with the C D well what would you say the la- CDs are gonna cease pressing? Yeah, in uh twenty twelve uh there is a rumor that the major labels are going to stop pressing CDs by the end of 2012. Uh, the only thing that makes this sound a little weird is that uh, digital music currently only accounts for 30% of album sales, but uh, that number is is steadily climbing. And I think, um, I mean, like, like we just said, it was the last time we bought a CD. Like, the thing that, as in many of our arguments, the thing that is going to, like, hang on to CDs the longest are the folks out in Nebraska who uh, don't have the ability to like hop on iTunes or whatever and download it. It's, it's really going to be the worst when that Sam Goody in Nebraska closes. It really is. <laughs> <sighs> and then after, I mean, once CDs stop pressing, then the only physical media still being pressed is going to be Blu-ray discs and DVDs. And I think DVDs are certainly, I'd say I'm going to hy- hypothesize that DVDs stop pressing by 2014. That could be. That could be. I mean, they're going to be. They're going to have a long tail to them because just like what we saw with VHS, uh, DVDs are going to th- be the thing that you find for a few bucks in the bargain bins at, at your local Walmart. You know? Well, right. But the question is, will new movies be pressed on them? I mean, I can still, if I look hard enough, I can find a Betamax in a bargain bin. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, even just uh, just delivering. I mean, I, you, I, you know, we didn't go out on Black Friday, but usually Walmart has those, uh, you know, pretty decent titles for like. You know, two to seven bucks that are usually a, a lot more expensive, and and you always find those older titles like that. And um, then the other uh, the other question we have here uh, is because this all links to getting your content online. So we have our movies, we have our music. The only thing after that that's pressed on physical media is video games. So at what point are we going to see consoles that are uh, so well connected that you are buying your video games in something much more akin to an iTunes store than going to a GameStop? That's well. true. That's, well, that's true. That's true. Uh, you know, I was actually thinking about this the other day because I was, uh, I, well, of course, the new dashboard update's coming. Well, it's supposed to have been come today. Right. But it got delayed. Uh, there was a tweet by Major Nelson saying that it got uh, it got pushed back. Um, but which puts us in the, the right direction for well, that actually happening. Exactly. Well, a lot of a lot of content providers are coming to the Xbox with this new update. I'm looking at Crackle, YouTube, Daily Motion, uh, a lot of providers like FiOS, Comcast, Xfinity over the next few months. Uh, and I started comparing that with you know wanting to put a Roku box in the in the living room where I already have my Xbox. So then I thought, what what if Microsoft does like an Xbox that's just for the video? Or what if they do an Xbox that's with no disk drive? Because how many games are already available? Like you can get all your Halo, Grand Theft Audio already online through the Xbox Marketplace without disk. Right. And then you could do like they would drop the price on that to maybe a hundred. 
Yeah. And then the two hundred dollar Xbox has like the ESPN and all the Comcast partnerships and Hulu and all that other fun video stuff. But yeah, doing a hundred dollar downloadable only. The only question though is, I wonder because obviously we've been playing uh, Call of Duty very recently. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Mountain Dew, I want to thank you so much. <laughs> the Hell, Hell yeah! I really want to thank you for that. Um. But I honestly wonder, like, how much data is actually on? Like, Call of Duty is the, one of the most popular games. How big is that game? How much would I have to download? That's true. It's Am I game. looking at, like, two and a half gigs? I'm guessing. Uh, well, probably. I think, well, probably, like, four gigs, maybe? Yeah, well, exactly. did you copy they're DVDs. It? They're DVDs for the Xbox. Did you copy it to your hard drive? No, uh, mostly because I did. I started to, and then I wanted to. I wanted to turn my Xbox off, and I went, that eh, doesn't really work that way. So <laughs> I decided to not do that. Gotcha. Well, that's probably the best way to figure find out, figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Just copy the disk to your Xbox. Yeah. Also, um, if you can, because it's, I don't know, uh, I'm going to talk out of my rear end for a second here. No uh, if way. you can figure out it, if, if it is a, uh, a single layer DVD. And then you can actually look at the disc itself. You can see how much of that disc has been written. You could probably make a pretty good guess as to how much of whatever capacity the disc is is actually being used. So, I mean, we're, we're talking about games uh, that are pretty, you know... I mean, it depends on how big your hard drives are. My, I have a 120 because I have an Elite from back in the day. Joshi, I think you have a smaller one. I think we have a hand up over here. Uh, I, I'm not condoning this, but a quick search of some of the, uh, uh, funnier sites on the internet that involve things that may or may not be legal, uh, shows that uh, you're looking at about five gigs. Even the Wii version is four. Okay. Okay. And, so, uh, and, and the Wii, uh, Wii? the PS3 version, 8.2 gigs. That's interesting. Good job, Sony. Hey, we, you know. You don't have to be as tight with things when you have all that space on a Blu-ray, right? So, um, so it's completely possible. I mean, to to any extent that you know we're already you know doing Steam games on uh, on our PCs, there or or you know clouding all of our our uh, games on our iPhones and stuff. So, um, so I, I think that's going to be the next step. I think you know instead of seeing the new Xbox, you're going to see like these slimmed down versions. Um, you know, I would think it would seem to make sense to me. Uh, but they need to move more of them to the marketplace, like they like like Sony's trying to do with their uh, with their PSP, whatever it's called these days. So, the PSP is it the what is it the Vita now? Yeah, I'm so out of touch with the Sony part. Uh, you're not missing much. I guess not. I guess not. But speaking of which, like I said, the, the although new, what, what's that? I, I do have to give it to Sony because uh, it, as we discussed earlier, I was in an adventure of hooking up an external hard drive to my Xbox Mm -hmm. for more space. And I came across the issue of only being able to use 16 gigs from a external source. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was weird. But Sony doesn't have a limit. Mm -hmm. So you can hook up how, whatever you want to their, uh, PS3 and, and load it up, there's yeah. no problem. Just load it I'm up. I'm wondering how many of these devices, like if once, uh, if obviously that's just a software limit. There's right. nothing physical that's stopping you from doing that. I'm wondering because now you have Verizon as a cable provider allowing you with their last cable box update that happened right before I moved, um, that you can hook up a hard drive with no limits, so you can just ex- just effectively expand your DVR to like six terabytes. If you really, really wanted to, or you can do, you know, now that the PS3 can hook that up and the and the Xbox can hook that up, how many of these hard drives, which are now super expensive due to flooding in Thailand, um, how many of those are now going to make that move and say, hey, we're going to give you the ability to put as much storage as you want here. You're going to download your games. If you want to download more than, say, 10 games to your Xbox, buy an external hard drive. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it's only a couple lines of code. That are stopping this from happening. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, that's a software update. In fact, they just came out with an update. I think it's today. I think it just came out today. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the one that we were talking about. It's been delayed today. Oh, it's delayed. It, it was due today. I don't know. It might oh. be out now, but there was a there was some tweets this morning saying it was getting delayed. So. Oh. <laughs> 
But Microsoft, it's- come on. This is your chance to tell Sony how bad they are in general. <laughs> like, like a lot more than usual. I mean, it's supposed to be a pretty interesting update. Again, a, a, a pretty big overhaul of the, uh, of the uh, uh, layout. Um, here's a little look at what the, they're doing for the Netflix app coming up. Uh, the Metro interface for a lot of it. Um, like I said, a lot of these content providers like Crackle, Daily Motion, stuff like that. Uh, but it, you know, it, this this could be this could be a pretty big one. Oh, uh, integration with Connect uh, for voice commands. Although it's not going to be as natural for everybody used to Siri over the last few weeks. So, um, what what is it, Josh? I don't like that. What the Connect I, I, first. First off, let me reiterate that the Connect is a bad idea. Number but don't two, don't you want to say Xbox put on the game? No, Xbox, give me an episode of How I Met Your Mother. No, you, you want to know why? Because by the time you're done telling the Xbox what to do, slowly enough that the Xbox understands what you want mm-hmm. it to do, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. could have done it with your hands or used the controller. This is me the controlling point. my TV with the Xbox. Yeah. Connect. Exactly. <laughs> the, the point is, if want, we never want, this approach this technology, it'll never get good enough that the device will, will be able to oh, understand what you're doing. I mean, voice technology for phones has been awful notoriously for years, but Siri's not half bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah lose the connection. It's not perfect. No, you're good. You're you're still there. You're just kind of slowing up a little bit. Um, yeah, Connect is a, is like a, a 1.0 of the product. It's, it's only going to get better, <laughs> you know? So, um... There will come a time where you can just plain English say, like, you know, hey, Xbox, do a thing. You could have... Hmm? Hey, Rob... Actually, uh, probably talk dirty to your Xbox, and it'll know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rob, uh, you want to cut out your video? We'll put up a picture or something and uh, uh, yeah, see we'll... if that helps your bandwidth there. Yeah, that'll Yay, hotel room Wi-Fi. Hey, I, I'm more... Uh, to address the chat room, Matt Weller, uh, you're, you're right. Connect is bad for games. Mm-hmm. I, I do, however, support the use of Connect for unconventional reasons. Like at the Comic Con when we interviewed the people using it to do 3D capture. Yeah, those guys were great. That's amazing. Yeah, like it's so much easier to do it that way. Mm-hmm. And I uh, essentially, <laughs> I kind of just want to get to the point where it's Minority Report. Mm-hmm. and this stuff is just floating in the air, and I'm moving it around. And this is a step in that direction, like right. Rob was saying. Rob, are you still there? Let's check your connection here. Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. Excellent. You sound a lot better. Um, um, uh, is it just me, or does Tom Cruise have the patent on, like, moving computer oh, it, interfaces around with his hands? Because that's in modern, <laughs> that's in Mission Impossible 3, too. Oh, no but way. it's on the windshield of a car. <laughs> well, no, and I want to say here, I want to say here and now, right here on the Awesome Cast, Tom Cruise... You're a terrible influence to teenage drivers everywhere. If I can't text, how are you going online and moving crap <laughs> around your windshield? I would just like to to uh, point out that the uh, the windshield computer in the Mission Mission Impossible movie is more like the one in Iron Man than it is the one in Minority Report. Okay, so uh, Tom Cruise and Tony Stark. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So it'd be Tom Cruise and Robert Robert Downey Jr. who have the uh, the patent on that. How does Robert Downey Jr. go from rehab to moving crap around on his car windshield? How does that happen? No, I, <laughs> Why doesn't that happen to me? I didn't get in trouble with the feds, it, Robert Downey Jr. But I no, I, I I've wondered that to m- myself honestly. Like he went from rehab, now he's now he's Tony Stark and Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Like yeah. how the hell does that happen? It's a freaking adventure, man. <laughs> It's crazy. Rehab crazy. and tranny hookers. And, and, you know, his life really kind of resembles the, uh, the the alcoholic car wreck that is Tony Stark. Yes. That's why he's picked. I could be an alcoholic car wreck, too, and move crap around on windshields. <laughs> all right, we're getting, all I do. We're, we're getting way we're off topic. Iron, I just want to do this on a windshield and not have it just be me smudging my windshield <laughs> like a crazy person. Well, if you get drunk enough, you can just do this anyways, and, you know, you'll think you're doing a good job. Um, anyways... <laughs> 
<laughs> you okay over there? He's killing me. He's killing me. <laughs> um, what else is going on in video games here? Um, I don't know. I, I cl- closed oh, the box hey, so I could you open the... Know, a... You know, we've talked about this before. You know how EA had those passcodes for you to get online access, which really stunk if you bought a secondhand game and the code was already used, so you couldn't get all, like online just to play Need for Speed? Or GameStop opened the box and took or, it out. Or GameStop opens the box and takes it out. Uh, well, this was sent, out, sent across by uh, the Silent Ninja on Twitter. That's my brother. Uh, online passcodes oh, can expire, but shoot, shouldn't, says EA. Apparently, if you buy a brand new copy of Hot Pursuit that came out last year, by the way, uh, that co- passcode to get online might be expired when you plug it in. In a sealed we- copy. Is this is this the part? Yeah, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well done, EA. Yes. Not only do you destroy the morale of your own co- of your own workers, <clears throat> not only do you jack up the prices on every single one of your games and make people buy the same game over and over and over again every August, you're now dropping stupid download codes that don't work. <laughs> this is awesome. So, and, and even even they're talking about Dragon Age. Dragon Age 2, which uh, released on March 11th, will see the online passcode expire on March 31st, 2012. Again, this uh, this covers the code itself, not the actual online access. So if you bought it before March 31st, 2012, you'll be able to get online and, and pass that date. But if you buy your copy and don't enter the code after that, until after that, you don't get online. Talk about time-sensitive uh, online play. This is like computer games? These are. This is an Xbox game. We're talking. We're talking so Xbox. You, games. you can't get on Xbox Live. You, with these we, games. It's not about Xbox Live because EA has their own online thing. I don't know. I, I download a couple demos of EA, like New Madden stuff like that. They have uh, their own access that links to your uh, that links to your uh, you know Xbox account and I pres- you know P- PS3 as well, PC mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and they're they're kind of doing their own service, much like uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare has the uh, Call of Duty Elite, yeah. and kind of links stuff up. They're kind of doing the same thing, that's dumb. and that's where. And in order to access that, it will then, from what I'm t- I can tell, then ask for this passcode. Okay. So hypothetically, what happens first? Either uh, a we figure out how to not screw people over uh, with the whole passcode in physical games thing, or b we stop making physical games. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm I think gonna they're say, gonna go with the continuing of screwing people over. Yeah, I, I'm pretty uh, sure that's like, almost guaranteed. I'm pretty sure we'll stop physical media before EA does it right. That's right. Well, <laughs> even even when we're talking about this again, uh, to, to Matt Silent Ninja that that gave me this, he said he's having an issue. He bought Gears of War for the PC, which he also has for the Xbox, but they have extra features multiplayer on there. He actually can't go on at, uh, Windows Live to play it, which Windows Live is like Xbox Live for PC, for those that don't know. Uh, he actually has to crack it in order to play the game that he bought because the code won't work anymore and register with Windows Live to reinstall the game. It's ridiculous. I mean, I've had problems. I went, went to uh, go buy uh, uh, or go play Arkham Asylum, which I bought ages ago on Windows you know, live for Windows because it was really cheap at the time, cheaper than Steam or anywhere else. And it was so hung up with updates, I couldn't get into it. It's to the point where where I think my brother's already done this, and I'm about to do the same thing, to rebuy the same game on Steam just so I can have access to the damn thing. I'm sorry. Well, this is the kind Stop of- supporting... <laughs> Crap bad, games, bad, crap bad uh, companies. <laughs> well, well, bad companies. Arkham Asylum is something I want to. You know, it's a good game. I want to play it, but it it's it's hindered by this. You know, I'm not I'm not aware that you know Windows Live is such a bad program when we deal with Xbox Live every day. Well, it's not the same thing though. It's not. It's not. Well, because it's my, a different interface on a is. different platform. It is. So. You shouldn't have been looking for the same experience. That's all I'm saying. I'm not looking for the same you experience. Were. You were. What experience? You what, were. The ability to play the game I paid for? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, an exp- that's an experience I shouldn't expect everywhere I go. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, the one time before we boycotted GameStop, mm-hmm. the one time I tried to use their uh, buy uh, e-game, whatever you want to call it, yeah, where I yeah. bought the game and downloaded it. Yeah. It didn't work. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I spent three emails with crap tech, uh, tech support mm-hmm. telling me things that, shocker, I've already done mm-hmm. because I'm in IT. I know how to support my own stuff. 
So when I send you an email and I say, hey, this download's not working, it gets to this point, it gives this error message, I've done this, this, and this, don't respond to me with, you should do this. Mm -hmm. Don't. So there you go. And this is this is why you're so against the Android platform for GameStop, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you, you had one-on-one -on -one support uh, uh, experience with them. They're bad at what they do. They're, they're trying to, <laughs> yeah, they're trying to move it in a different market. It's not the same kind of customer service experience. Okay, you know? so it's let's cool move on because well, we lost Rob. <laughs> <laughs> one last game one because I know, Chachi, you have some experience with this head-on. It's not in a rundown. Sorry, guys. But Grand Theft Auto 3 10-year anniversary edition coming to iOS and Android December 15th for four ninety nine. Amazing. Buy it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You played this on the iPad at, yeah. at New York Comic Con. Um, on the iPad, was it 2? Uh, it's probably the iPad 2, yeah. yeah. Uh, it says it will be available for uh, iPhone 4 and 4Ss, uh, both iPads, uh, and uh, I guess Android devices. 16 Android devices have been explicitly confirmed for compatibility. But, I mean, if you liked Grand Theft Auto 3... And it's the you full want, game. And you want to take it with you. Does it look a little bit better, it, do you think? Yeah, it has updated graphics. From the PlayStation 2. Yeah. yeah. Um, the controls are super smooth, easy to use. And, I mean, it's Grand Theft Auto 3 at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of insane to think about that the graphics capability of a PS2 wasn't enough? <laughs> no. And it's now on an iPad, which is a 10-inch touchscreen that you just carry with you wherever exactly. you go. Exactly. It, it, I, I want to really, I want to really make sure that we're all understanding it, that well, one. Well, even have you a played PlayStation Two? Yeah. I even know. even have you played like the Rage HD game they have on the iPad or or iPhone? Uh, Infinity Infinity Blade, the new Infinity Blade just came out. Actually, this stuff looks tremendous. I have Rage for 360. You have Rage for the 360? I haven't played it yet, though. <laughs> I've been too busy with Call of Duty. I, mean, exactly. I have the demo for it I want to try out. But um, <laughs> but, but I mean, it looks tremendous yeah, on I the mean, iPad. I started playing Call of Duty. Yeah. With yeah, the well, exception... You need, you need to get an Xbox. Play like Call of Duty with us. Come on. With the exception of uh, some wrestling. I, would, wait, <laughs> I was about to say something, but I realized how funny it was. What I actually need is something that's small and lightweight that I can carry with me when i travel because i don't spend that much time in my living room gosh what what could i get <laughs> shut up you could get a kindle fire i heard it's awesome <laughs> but i mean yeah it, it is ridiculous when you think about it that uh a ps2 game looks even better <laughs> on an ipod mm -hmm. or an ipad mm -hmm. so i mean i i noticed no difference in the gameplay itself yeah. between like, I mean, it was, it was smooth. I got through three missions rather quickly. So, I mean, it was easy to play. Yeah, I remember like it being kind of hard to play a little bit on like something like the PlayStation. Cause what does X do? You know, yeah. it's more explicit on yeah. these things because everything's on the screen. Yeah, and you it, got little pictures telling you what the buttons do. Exactly. Exactly. So. I play a bit of the Chinatown Wars on, uh, on the iPhone. And yeah, it's the same thing. You know, I, I would get frustrated if I went and played original GTA, like the top down ones, because you're like, okay, what does this button do? What does this button do? Yeah. And, and that's usually the thing that holds people back from playing these games. That's why the Wii became so popular, because because the people that are like having uh, buttonitis, uh, you know, are able to jump into something like that. It's more more clear. So, anyways, hey, what else is uh, maybe not doing so well there, Rob? <clears throat> uh, oh, a lot of things. <laughs> What in particular are we addressing at the moment? Are we addressing AJ's attempted segue to talk about the Kindle Fire? I think so, Rob! Uh, oh! <laughs> Man, that thing sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> I want you to know. I've not touched one yet. Have you played with it yet? I haven't played with it, but man, everybody who I've heard who has is not very happy. I, I want you to know that you sent out that tweet mm -hmm. saying that the Kindle Fire is dead. Yeah. And I got multiple messages <laughs> uh, on my phone from people who can't listen to the show asking me why the Kindle Fire is dead. Because they're probably getting one for Christmas, or they are getting one for Christmas, and they haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> so, uh, now, now, Rob, what, what are the complaints you've been hearing? Um, it is uncomfortable to hold, and that the, uh, the wet, for some reason, I, I personally cannot cite reasons, because I haven't uh, uh, held it in my hand yet. But people are saying that the UI for manipulating things like magazines uh, on the Kindle Fire 
I'm not sure why they would have made it different than the regular Kindle, which seems to be working out pretty well. But on the Kindle Fire, uh, it does not seem to be working out pretty well. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I'm just going to go ahead and point out that these people are probably wrong, or they're probably like us. Therefore, their opinions really don't matter. Mm-hmm. Well, also, they're not the, um, they're not the uh, intended target. Yes, AJ. Hi, the, my uh, name's I Rob. actually got to play with the Kindle Fire the other day. <laughs> okay. um, and AJ it's, had it's his hand up. laggy, and it's not very smooth. And I did play with the, I opened a magazine, and I tried to flip through it, and it's, there's, it works. Let's not kid ourselves, it works. It's $199 you're paying for what you get. However, <clears throat> There is no polish to this thing. Okay. Not one bit of polish. It's when you turn a page, it takes it about a half second to do so. When you open the magazine, it pulls up the cover and it kind of sits there for like 30 seconds and then goes into the magazine. And then once you're in there, you would think like, oh, hey, there's 30 seconds. It's like, I don't know, buffering pages or something stupid. No, it's still loading each page as you go. And it's just one giant PDF. All right, Rob. Uh, it, we were just we had cross talk there, but um, the the thing that I linked to earlier this week that I think uh, Awesome Cast retweeted was about usage statistics on the Kindle Fire, and what was happening was basically a bunch of people got them before Thanksgiving, and then after Thanksgiving weekend, uh, usage of the Kindle Fire dropped by more than eighty five percent. So basically, people got it, they said, "Oh, it's neat," and then they had either <clears throat> they were bored. Uh, they didn't actually want it or they had trouble using it because it fell all the way back down to something like a little more than 10% of people who, who like per, were providing Kindle Fire online activity. So uh, People just don't care about it. The people who have it don't like it. Okay, so it, and it's not sustained use. It's a wild, new, shiny, let's, let's get this because it's the new thing. And it's kind of wearing off, even though it is the most the top selling thing on Amazon right now. Mm. So so you, you're thinking there's going to be a lot of uh, Listen, secondhand kindling going on with this device. I I don't know. I mean, it's everything. Everything we're saying about it is, is all, you know, speculative uh, speculation. If you right. But compared to everything else that's out there, like we said the last time we talked about tablets and and how the fire didn't make a lot of sense, is that it's two hundred dollars and it doesn't set itself apart from the other opportunities that make a lot more sense for that kind of money. There's a question in the chat room from, from uh, Matt uh, Weller. Uh, did the did the use slip off or connections to Amazon slip? Right, and that, that's another uh, those thing. Those statistics are from an ad network. Okay, okay. So so connections for use, online activity. All right, we actually do have a chart here from Chitika. Yep. Kindle Fire online activity. Um, so this could just mean people aren't connecting with the browser with it. Uh, there's there's plenty of other stuff you could be doing with this device, like playing Angry Birds all day. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, it's one way to look at it, but you know, this isn't the, the final be all. You know, of what's going on with it. Um, let's see. It says it's peak, but still growing. Uh, That's what the chart says. Yeah, the chart. Yeah. But um, I'm just wait until Christmas. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and venture out and venture a guess that the usage is gonna go back up. Yeah. And I still think this is a pretty good introductory thing for people that want to get into tablets. Again, not putting, you know, you can buy like two and a half of these things for as much as it takes to get an iPad. Well, the question with with buying it over Christmas, I mean, what we saw here was a lot of people buying it over, uh, you know, all of the sale lead up to Black Friday. And then everybody had them and they stopped using them. Uh, because I think this this ad usage is actually the idea is that it always maintains a connection of some kind. But if you don't... Cellular connectivity and that kind of thing. This isn't about like downloading content. This is about ads being fed to the device. Can I pose um, a theory? What's that? What's that? So a lot of people that we follow on Twitter, and I say we because I believe all four of us follow pretty much these people, um, but a, a, a few of them got uh, Kindles, the fires, yep. uh, on a Black Friday sale. Mm-hmm. They received them, mm-hmm. and then they took them out of a box to test them before they put them back away to give to someone as Christmas. 
<laughs> like okay. as a Christmas gift. Okay, okay. So, I, I mean, let me just throw this out there, but it's highly unlikely, but I mean, that could have been just a usage from these people like opening them up or, to see what they're like or it's or it's or it's all the uh all the all the review units that went out to yeah. everybody and they're all testing them hardcore all this stuff they testing out every aspect on it and then they sent their return copy back right <laughs> and all that all that activity is gone yeah. i um, think the key here the one thing that that we're not gonna be able to say true you know truly how well the kindle is doing mm -hmm. the, or the kindle fire is doing excuse me until probably second quarter physical results from Amazon. Yeah. That's when you're going to hear, like you're likely going to hear about return rates, any sort of losses that they're going to incur, high rim, mm -hmm. uh, which effectively, let's be real honest here, the playbook and the uh, Kindle Fire are effectively the exact same tablet. They're made by the same company in China. Uh, it's a seven-inch tablet. They're almost exactly the same. Rim took a four hundred eighty-five million dollar bath on these things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that while yes, Amazon is selling these at a loss, and I think that's why they're not going to take as big of a, a bath on this. I think that their their gamble, which is paid off on the on the regular e and Kindle side, um, this is the next logical step for them, and I. I I, I'm being honest, I hope that it works. Yeah. But I'm also looking at it, and I, uh, there's a lot of analysts that are saying that this is helping Apple and the iPad. I agree with them. Uh, you have a lot of people who are buying these who may see the interface as being a little herky-jerky, or they're seeing it and it's not as smooth as an iPad, and they may say, oh, well, in order to get the smooth, I got in order to get the smooth and the polish and for everything to be generally nice i have to spend up and get an ipad and then they take that next step and they go up and they get an ipad mm -hmm. or even one of the big um even one of the big galaxy tab 10 ones that hot wheels has um that i mean that's that's the sort of thing that you're that you're looking at yeah um and, and also you mentioned that you mentioned what's going on with uh rim's playbook uh they dropped that in 200 dollars kind of in response to this weren't they since it is sort of the same thing um, and, and, and you're seeing a lot of moves. The Nook is 250, and, and might be hurting because it is 50 dollars more. Um, and uh, you know what happens to stuff like the tab? Is that stuff going to slide down? And, and is it going to be more accessible, like like Matt and guys like Hot Wheels in there that that are going for it? And now, and, and you know, we sit there, and you know, we're used to iPads, we're used to iPhones. You know, we, we've got, you know, I think most of us here within the last couple generations, and. Um, what about the person that steps up and hasn't had their hands on one of these things? Something like the Kindle Fire may be just fine, you know, to have that slow responsiveness. Because maybe they're sitting on a five-year-old computer at home, for all we know. Right, and you know? that's I mean, what I said. If we're, we're talking not... about the general person, they're not buying high-end equipment. Right, we're not the target audience. No. So I, and I think what's that... not good for us may be amazing for someone else. Yeah, and, so... and RIM doesn't have the, we're hoping you buy all your digital crap on here. And give money back to us, taking that loss like Rim does, taking the loss. Yeah. So it, it, it's all part of the plan as far as Amazon's concerned. Um, well, there's an auction going on for an iPad in the chat room. Is it? What, no, is somebody selling one? No, it's <laughs> just the comments. It makes it look like it look look like an auction. Mm -hmm. So. So um, and now uh, AJ, I know you've been playing with this. I don't know about anybody else here as much. I know I'm still a Pandora fan, but Spotify had a big announcement last week. Have you been uh, diving into this? No, no, <laughs> no. Um, for the most part, I mean, the Spotify as it <laughs> no, is <not> at all. <laughs> works as a service. Uh, I get the fact. I know why they did it. I mean, they did it to expand what they do they're trying they're going the facebook route where they're going to say okay well we're going to become a platform you want to do something cool that we're not doing that's all right here's some apis um i haven't dived i haven't dove into this uh, i have the regular spotify app it does the job it gets me uh my uh it gets me my music to my ears that's all I really need it for. So you're not That's excited. why I pay the money. <laughs> so you're not excited about these apps they're bringing to Spotify. Uh, they're uh, they're announcing partners including Rolling Stone, The Guardian, Billboard, Pitchfork, and more. Uh, oh man, all of those things sound terrible to me. All right. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. The Rolling Stone is going to do nothing but give me reviews of the music that I'm listening to, which is what my brain's for. 
Um, what was the other one? The Guardian. Uh, I don't even know why they're involved. Uh, what was the other one? I'm just destroying yeah, Spotify's app platform with my voice right now. Hold on. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I can't get like everybody goes nuts about this, and they're like, "Oh man, we really want to uh, d- allow you to discover new music." I get mad because you won't give me the music that I actually want the day it comes out. Spotify, mm-hmm. how about you get on that? Mac Miller took two weeks to get in the, into your store. Yeah, but you already had it. Oh, <laughs> I know I already had it, and I had to put it. Uh, I put it into Spotify myself, but I want to be able to listen to it on my phone in the car. And in order to do that, I have to have it in the Spotify store. I could put it on my phone, which is fine, but I want to be able to stream all my music. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that, that you know, they, a lot of the things that they're putting in, while nice, they're looking to kind of branch out from music. I'm very happy with the core service. I'm happy with <laughs> music. I click a song and it plays. Right. It plays wherever I am, to my phone, on my desktop, wherever. Yeah, That's what exactly. I'm looking for. I'd like a Spotify app. You want to get app happy? Give me an app, iPad app, please. Exactly. When I open when I when I open Spotify, you know what I want? Your music. I want to listen to music. Yeah. I don't want to read the Rolling Stone. That's why I mean that's that's why I started playing per- paying for Pandora because I like to just bring it up. Hey, I want some music for this drive. Hey, I want some music to go, you know, take a shower or what, do what, do some work or whatever. And uh, yeah, you don't have to think about it. Right. And that sounds like the experience you guys are having with that. Right. I don't. You know. If I want to read a magazine, I'll bring up a magazine site. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, now, the, I'll open a book. Now, the complaint, it, supposedly, and see, can, can you speak to this, AJ? Uh, they say that music discovery isn't as strong with Spotify. And this is supposed to solve that problem. No. Um, the, the discovery, their idea of discovery, and I think this is why they did it, their idea of discovery is to give you what new music is in the store, and they give you, like, eight pictures. Mm-hmm. And then you have to click more, and it gives you another eight pictures and then you click more and it recycles those same eight pictures again and then drops them back in as if they're all new. Um, yeah, I, I think that music discovery definitely lacks with Spotify. It's not like Pandora where you click play and it goes and it brings all sorts of weird, like your initial artist stuff. Uh, what I really like Spotify for is that I like listening to full albums so I'll go find that full album and I'll star the whole thing and then I'll listen to the music. And then when the music comes, you know, you know, I could just listen to that album or, oh, man, I haven't heard this song in 15 years. I'd like to listen to that play. That's it. That's my discovery. Just random things that somebody mentions. Oh, yeah. Do you remember Shaggy? Yeah, I remember Shaggy. I want to <laughs> listen to that right now. And then I play it. I, I think that yes, there is. A, I think that they need to definitely beef up their music discovery, but I don't think it's the worst thing in the world right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that them just getting out their core functionality, which is I can search for any song in the world and play it ninety three percent of the time, is is definitely there, and they've definitely gotten it in there, and they've gotten me to pay them money. So I think they've already won. I don't think they need to. <laughs> I think that this is for other people. The Rolling Stone, Guardian, Last FM, Billboard, Pitchfork. These are all things for people who are on the fence. The people who care about just their core stuff and are going to pay them actual money are going to do that regardless, I think. Okay. All right. So, uh, I also wanted to mention that I think the, um, the reason that like the reason that the Guardian and Billboard are getting involved are not to provide you with like Billboard magazine and, and the Guardian newspaper, but more so that the Guardian can say, like, this is our hip-hop playlist this week. Yeah. Of, like, fresh on stuff like that. Because um, for me, like, uh, the best value I've gotten out of Spotify is people sharing their playlists. Yeah. Like, yeah. other people have put together, like, this is a list of songs or whatever and whatever. And, it, and it, that's my way of, of being introduced into music. Like AJ said, the, the discovery stuff on Spotify is awful. That's why I use Pandora nine times out of ten. But when I want to find music, I find somebody else who has good taste, and I listen to what they're listening to. So it's very dependent as far as the music discovery that they do have so, yeah. on people. 
So, all right, I want to touch on this as the big story this week: carrier IQ. Mm. What the hell is it, and why should I worry about it? It's um, his big brother. He, he's out to destroy your. They're watching your you. Okay, actually, what it is? It's a bug testing tool that got out of hand. <laughs> yeah now now did it get out of hand or did the pr get out of hand because uh for those of the, those that haven't followed the craziness in the last week uh it was somebody somebody did a debug on something a few it was is a hacker or something that was doing this and uh, uh came across carry iq saw it was uh capturing everything including keystrokes on somebody's phone uh which was an hcc phone uh and it just kind of this was a few weeks ago and uh, it just exploded in the news. Like Al Franken stepped up, and, and he's 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 asking what's going on. Everybody was racing to deny or confirm, mostly deny or downplay their use of Carrier IQ, uh, including Verizon, uh, uh, Nokia, AT and T, uh, Sprint, uh, Apple, uh, denied denied they were going to be using it anymore um, as of iOS five. So 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 what 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 have you caught on with this uh, agent or Rob? Uh, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> first, first for anybody who's completely out of the loop, uh, Carrier IQ is a, we'll call it a subroutine. It's an application that you will never actually see unless you dig for it. Uh, that will monitor everything you do on your screen uh, in a way that is translatable to figure out, like, literally what your physical button presses were. The example that the guy in the video made um, was that he, he navigated his home screen, he brought up. Uh, the, the numpad to make a phone call, and he would hit the one button, and you would see a, a little line in Carrier IQ that say that he had hit button 46, with cor which correspond to the number one button on the keypad. So things like that. So you could go through Carrier IQ and see what numbers were called. It would also uh, contain text messages in plain text. The biggest problem with Carrier IQ is that when you log into certain things in a, in a web browser, it should be... Uh, Anything with a HTTPS, uh, an SSL certificate, should be encrypting the, the data that is being passed through the browser. And Carrier IQ is actually capturing things that were being put into the browser that are supposed to be encrypted because Carrier IQ was seeing them before the browser was seeing them because Carrier IQ was a system level application. That's the security risk. But yeah, I, real, I, I, go realistically, what the like the best thing I can compare this to is if you are familiar with a car at all, you understand that your car has a computer. And that computer has a bit of a memory of things that it's encountered. Uh, you know, it'll be able to take care of what systems have gone down, uh, what systems are currently experiencing problems. Some computers are incredibly advanced. A lot of computers can actually keep track of, like, max speed of the motor and things like that. But nobody ever really complains about it too much because there isn't a GPS chip in it. Because your mechanic does not care that you drove down Main Street when you broke down. He cares that you broke down. On the other hand, when you're writing software, it might matter that you were driving down Main Street or looking at a specific website or something like that. So this sort of thing is extremely useful when doing usage cases, figuring out how the user is manipulating the interface to provide a better experience or figure out why a certain part of the phone is unpopular and things like that. I think what the, the real issue here is the security issues and uh, some of the privacy issues like containing text messages in plain text. I don't have that. I have a problem with them having the text messages in there, but they should be encrypted somehow. And, you know, the fact that, say, I get Sorg's phone and Sorg's phone is running Carrier IQ. If I'm smart enough, I can look up a, uh, a log of sorts of everything that Sorg had ever done on his phone, which may or may not include, like, some pretty sensitive information. I think the main, the main purpose that a lot of the carriers had Carrier IQ and a lot of the manufacturers had Carrier IQ, is when um, Donnie from Nebraska calls uh, Verizon or AT&T or Sprint or whatever cell phone service he has and says, hey, my phone's been dropping calls a lot lately. And that is what keeps track of it. That piece of software keeps that sort of thing intact. And AT&T can take that phone if they really wanted to and say, Okay, we see that you dropped a call uh, on December 5th. We see that you dropped a call on December 3rd. We can also see that you happen to be in this area of Nebraska where we don't really have such great service. 
And then they can correlate that and they can determine how many people are dropping calls in that area. And that's the sort of, that's what this is designed to do. And apparently carrier IQ, because they just operate between themselves and the carrier and the manufacturers, apparently have the worst PR department in the world <laughs> and didn't get out in front of this. This guy found a security hole. And as such, he should be uh, allotted for it. That's the correct thing to do. He should be doing that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at the same time, you know, th I think that that needed to be – I, I think he did the um, – what's the word here I want to use? He zero-dayed that. Yes, he did zero-day that. He zero-dayed that. And for those <laughs> of you who don't know what I'm talking about, it means he released something to the public that may or may not have been known – to the company who makes said piece of software, whether it's an operating system, an application, something or so on. And I think that because he did that, because he just straight up announced it to the public and he didn't just say, oh, hey, there's this piece of software called Carrier IQ written by a company called Carrier IQ. And this is what they do and say to them, hey, um, you have this piece of software on the phone and you're logging all this stuff completely unencrypted, even though it should be encrypted. Um, you should probably fix that. That's the ethical way to go about that. Many people who are on the internet just want a little bit of internet fame. So this guy's blog and this video got a bazillion hits because people were like, wait a minute, are you serious? I can't get, I, wait a minute, it knows that I'm dialing numbers and it's taking all my text messages and taking my location and my web browsing history and it's sending it up to the internet and possibly to China where terrorists are gonna come get me? Whoa. <laughs> No, this phone, this piece of software is just keeping track of what it is that you do so that when you complain to your carrier slash manufacturer, they can say yes or no that you actually are saying what you're saying. The other thing that happened when he uh, first released this information is that uh, Carrier IQ or a uh, organization acting on behalf of Carrier IQ made attempts to have it censored from the Internet to get it taken down. And the guy actually had to team up with the electron the Electronic Frontier Foundation to uh, make sure that the video stayed up on YouTube without any issues at all. And I mean, it really is completely a PR thing. It is a, it's a legitimate thing. It's kind of broken. Not really cool. I'm sure there's like, you know, two people in the world who have successfully used Carrier IQ maliciously against someone. Um, it would have been really nice for him to get a hold of somebody and say like, hey, this is kind of a thing. Even if it was, uh, you know, an email to the EFF and saying, hey, this is a huge privacy concern and a huge security concern, and somebody should really be addressing this. And I have a feeling if I say something about it, nobody's going to care. So maybe you can contact some people. That would have been the cool way to do it. The nice thing that comes out of this, because he created such a huge problem for Carrier IQ and everybody who uses it, is that because it's pushed out into the public so quickly, it is also they. It kind of forces their hand to do something about it very quickly. I saw somebody. Uh, I saw this on Twitter the other day. I don't remember who said it, but uh, I think that uh, somebody made the prediction that in two weeks, Carrier IQ will not have their software on anyone's phones anymore, and in two months, Carrier IQ will change their name and their software will be right back on your phone. I mean, that's. I, that's I would agree with that, but I would say for the second round, <clears throat> nothing is in plain text. And they stop capturing yeah. unencrypted browser data. Yeah, I think that's that's likely what will happen is you're going to have this company is going to be gone and it's going to come back as like a, a cell phone knowledge or something like that. And they're going to have the same piece of software, but they're going to have all the security patched up so that, yes, they can still get uh, signal strength and where you were when you had said dropped call so that they can diagnose problems with their network because that's what it's for. And they're going to probably take out all the stuff about collecting text messages, or uh, or the, they may keep the idea the 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 thing that you called, or the thing that you made a phone call to a number, or that you sent a text message, but not the actual contents of the number. They'll have they'll likely have the number, but they won't keep it in real time. And they'll have the text message, the fact that you sent one, but not have the content. Or you created a data session that lasted 30 seconds and you downloaded 500K of data or something like that that encapsulates what they need but keeps all of the privacy stuff to a minimum, that keeps all the privacy problems to a minimum. Well, I, I would just like to point out that uh, 
sorry, my mic was down. I was trying to talk. <laughs> but um, it, it, even other like follow-up reports for this have shown that it doesn't it doesn't record anything. Mm-hmm. And the information is only available to outside sources when requested by the proper place. So that's, um, I, I mean, Carrie IQ isn't sitting there on a treasure trove of all this information from what we can tell. Uh, you know, Sprint or AT&T who want this information, hit the checkbox, give us this, that you know, location, software, you know, et cetera. It's like, you know, like crash reports or something. Right. Well, um, I, I think so, the other thing is that a lot of a lot of people freaked out because they thought that the carriers and everything, especially because then it was determined that Apple was doing this. And, or that it was on, it was in it was part of iOS, mm-hmm. and I think uh, that a lot of people realized Apple learned their lesson with the location gate, uh, and so <laughs> if you go into your phone and you tap uh, settings, and you go to general, and you go to I believe it's about, and you scroll down here and you scroll down, and hopefully my uh, phone number wasn't on there. It wasn't good. And you tap this Diagnostics and Usage button, and right here, this Don't Use, that's Carrier IQ. You oh. turn on Don't Use, nothing gets recorded anymore. Now, but they say that there's uh, uh, no Carrier IQ as of iOS 5? Uh, it was in 2 iOS 5. It's actually in iOS 5, um, but it's only doing, it's it's this. It's this Diagnostics and Usage it's been, thing. And it's fact, been there's le- a little link down here. Yeah. But if you tap on it, it goes to a web page and it talks about all of what they do. And they they talk about it and they say, this is what we're collecting. This is not what we're collecting. It may include details about your hardware and operating system, data about how you use your device and applications. None of the collected information identifies you personally. Personal data is either not logged at all or is removed from any reports before they're sent to Apple. Right. You can review the information by going to settings, general, about, and looking under diagnostics and usage. And if I tap diagnostics mm. and usage data, you can see all of the crash reports. And you can see how many times things have crashed on my phone, specifically low memory errors. Oh, wow. Yeah. But I mean, well, even. That's, that's that thing that we talked about. Uh, <clears throat> you remember when I. Uh, what was it? When I rolled to iOS 5 Gold from an iOS 5 beta and I was having issues trying to figure out why my battery was dying. I had to look at those logs to try and figure out what was causing that problem. Sound right. familiar? Mine sends a lot of logs. <laughs> right. I mean, it's... holy, holy crap! It sends a lot of logs. Yeah, uh, but it's actually if you if you click "Don't use," it doesn't send them anywhere. It just yeah, stays on your yeah. phone. Uh, here's the uh, here's the other funny part. Okay. Uh, for those of you who are into jailbreaking, yeah, uh, the the fine jailbreaking community has uh, realized that when they uh, test crash reports. And they get sent back to Apple. It tips Apple off that they're trying to crash something to get in and 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 hack it. And so Apple fixes the hole before they even get to the hole. Uh, so they've created a uh, an application that takes those those same crash reports and instead of sending them to Apple, it sends them to the jailbreakers. And uh, as when they they turned it on and in one day got ten million crash reports. <laughs> Because they want to find the holes before Apple does. Uh, and I thought that was a rather clever thing <laughs> to go about doing. Uh, and so that's the sort of thing that they're doing. They want to find these holes. They want to crash applications and find a hole into the OS that allows them to do the jailbreaking thing so that they can they can actually jailbreak the OS. Um, but that's the sort of data that they're looking at. And that's carrier IQ is effectively that. Right. That's and, the and, real and simple mobile. form. Oh, what's up, Travis? Uh, T-Mobile had a, uh, how do I put this, a, a timely leaked internal memo, as always seems to happen around events like this. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, what happened is T-Mobile got wind of the carrier IQ, so they released an internal memo to their employees, letting them know like what T-Mobile does, mm-hmm. uses this information for. And uh, the only three things that... T-Mobile uses Carrier IQ for is to diagnose battery performance, uh, dropped calls, and application failure. That's it. If, if you really don't want people using that information, then you should probably move to Nebraska. 
Yeah, I, I think that this got blown way out of proportion, mm-hmm. and Carrier IQ kind of took it on the chin because they apparently don't know how to talk to the public. Well, you got to think this is a company that that's a very business to business kind of company. Uh-huh. This so, is business to business only. Their PR people, yeah, their PR people anything. are prepared for uh, Al Franken to to step up and uh, say, "Hey, what are you doing here?" And they they flipped out, went off the handle, and 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 put out a really really bad report. Mm-hmm. So, so I think that I think that they're going to be a okay with a name change and some and some changes <laughs> to their application, and they're going to stay on your phone. And you're going to have to deal with it. And the Sorry. other thing that's uh, it's important for people to understand with Carrier IQ is that Carrier IQ is something that's bought by your carrier. It's bought by AT and T, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, whoever. So if you talk to Carrier IQ, Carrier IQ says, "Hey, don't worry about it, man. We're not selling any information to third parties." They're not because it's up to your carrier to make that decision. And they were actually on uh, Tech News today. They, uh, one of the guys actually pulled up your. Uh, um, you know the, the the what you sign when you get your phone when you sign up for the carrier that that and their whole privacy policy it explains that they can do this uh, to some extent what they're doing with that information but a lot of it does seem open ended and it's within at least your rights that you signed away when you got your phone right with that contract and currently with the the case between iOS and Android is that in iOS it is turned off by default but okay. And, and well, it, I, I went into my phone and I checked, and it's turned off. I do believe off. it is turned on by default. Okay. So uh, apparently I went in and turned it off when I booted up the phone. Mm-hmm. So so on that note, now that we're all scared. Um, I'm not scared. We're not scared. We had the Big Brother scared. discussion like four episodes ago. <laughs> That's true. You, you're, it, you need to live in a cave with no, <laughs> with no technology and just wads of cash. That you can't spend because they know. They know. Yeah, just 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 hide. hide. Don't do anything. Hunt squirrels and starve. Squirrels. Well, I mean, I mean, if you shoot a buffalo, you're really only going to be able to carry about a hundred pounds. Yeah, like exactly. Lion. You're. I mean, that's. A if waste. you have any experience in Oregon Trail, you know how hard that is. I mean, it, it's just a waste <laughs> of meat. I mean, you shoot you shoot small squirrels. Uh, the small rabbits and small deer. You overshoot what you can carry in the wag. <laughs> you're just wasting time. Yep. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Oh, no, no, guys. Hey, this has been your awesome cast for this week. Uh, again, Chachi. He's at ChachiSays.net. Yep, check out the number one watch show on Sorgatron Media. <laughs> Chachi, Chachi Says the Vidcast. Yeah, apparently. apparently. And read the number one blog. It's the hand turkeys. So... Learn how to make hand turkeys with Chachi. Exactly. Unsung. Got an episode up yesterday. I don't watch it. You get... What? <laughs> Chachi in his nice Christmas sweaters, hanging out with the Christmas trees in the in the what? multicultural... I wasn't wearing a Christmas sweater. No, you're wearing a sweater. It was very festive. I don't know. It was a blue sweater. It was a blue sweater. <laughs> I don't know. You looked like you're going to grandma's for dinner. It was perfect for, the, for your surroundings is what I'm trying to say. Whatever. Moving Damn on. kids, get off my lawn. AJ's at virtualpotholes.wordpress.com for his blog. You should buy the dot .com. I'm just saying. I, no, because one, it's not a game blog, so you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, number two, yeah, I probably will eventually buy the dot .com and all that other fun stuff. I no, he, I have to do that. he no. said that because the other day uh, on Twitter, I, I threw a fit because... Uh, Someone I was following, who whom I'm no longer following, what? Okay. Uh, had put up like a blog, a blog spot website. People still use that. Yeah, that they were reviewing. But they're going to get the terrorist button, right? But they 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 were using it to review <laughs> games and stuff. Terrorist. And like these were straight up legit reviews. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, but if you expect me to take you seriously. Buy a dot com, uh, and also uh, uh, buy. I, I think maybe I think maybe I, I th- hold on, hold on. You know what? We're going to do this. We're going to do this as a group. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do this. No, 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 no. We'll do this after the show. We'll do this after. Okay, the show. okay. Uh, hey, Bobby says uh, make a scroll belt like uh, Daryl on exactly on Walking Dead. I mean, yeah. you can't you can't go to the store to buy belts, so you got to use every part. That's right. <laughs> Rob is at robjdlc.com <laughs> doing Rob things. Yep. 
calling shens all over the place. So many shens all over the shens. Yep. There's a. I'm currently. I'm deciding. Deciding what I want to have for dinner. You're, let's face it. You're going back to. The you're local. going for pork or beef. You're not well, going. Well, actually, for see, uh, a mother's restaurant is uh, right across the street. If you're familiar with uh, New Orleans, you know the mother's is kind of a big deal. So my choice is. Uh, I'm thinking I might go for the uh, Po Boy Parody Special, which is uh, baked ham, roast beef, debris, debris, D E B R I S, and gravy. Ooh. Oh my god. My god. That's on Or I, I might do the soft shell crab Po Boy. That's kind Ooh. of. Oh. 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 Baby Jesus, I'm reaching for the ceiling. I'm reaching for the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I want Po Boy right now. And it, the funny thing is, he <laughs> really was reaching for the ceiling. <laughs> like, no, I, of course I was reaching for the ceiling. Listen. If somebody's going to mention really tasty food to me, <laughs> likely going for the ceiling. Mm. I'm going to have to find an opportunity right to like, just go like this. To just go like this. I'm just going to start whispering food items into your ear when I see you in public just to make you reach for the ceiling. Oh, don't you do that. I will. I will reach for the ceiling. We're going to be eating wings. You're going to go, oh, man, you remember when I had, I had ham debris? Oh, no! no, no, no. <laughs> Awesome. Hey, 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 AJ, hey, AJ, huh, huh, huh. St. Louis style Nemon ranch ribs with bulgogi green beans. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I can't even hear you now, Rob. And, and, and wait, <laughs> wait, 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 with wait. That one. Oh, Crispy cream bread pudding. Oh, uh, uh -huh. can't stay down for that one, my friend. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, AJ and does. of course, guys, you can what do you got, us. Sword? Every, what I got, Sorgatron.com. There's not much going on there this week. Uh, there's a lot going on. Other places, SorgatronMedia.com. All kinds of shows going on. We're going to have our Christmas specials next Friday, the 16th, I believe. So tune Ooh. in for that. We're going to get some drinking on and and talk tech and wrestling and, and everything. It's going to be pretty <laughs> crazy. So does I that know. mean that there is no show... <laughs> Sorry, Chachi's, Chachi's got the delay for, for the hands up in the air, so he's uh, uh he's having fun with that. So for for like fifteen seconds, it was just AJ reaching for the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, we uh, you know, we were going to do that next week, and there'll be no show uh the next two weeks then, because it will be uh, we'll we'll be just posting up our Christmas special for the show two weeks from now. It'll be vacation. so one more live Tuesday show before for the rest of the year. For the rest, for the of, the rest year. of the year, then we're gonna do our Christmas show on Friday, next Friday, and uh, vacation we'll have a, and have a best of vacation. Please. So, so, are you telling people that they can get uh, two episodes of Awesome Cast in one week? Is that what's happening? If you join us live, yes. yes. Oh yes. snap! Amazing, isn't it? If you it? don't join us live, you're not going to see it until the next week, and you're probably not going to see most of it. And the other thing, sensor button's gone for this one, guys. Woo! Whoa! That's right. Wait, Merry, wasn't Merry Christmas. Sensor, That's wasn't my gift the for you. Sensor button gone for the last one too. Uh, yeah, but we we're talking about Steve Jobs. <laughs> it kind of went with it. Um, but uh, but that one I'm not even going to try. Uh, because we're going to be drinking. Come on. Uh, so th oh, so there's man. that and uh, hey, oh god I, you, know, uh, you know what I'm, I might have for the the show what's that um homemade Polish eggnog oh god oh, oh. wait 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 no wait Polish eggnog no hands stay down <laughs> they started it's, it's highly like, alcoholic premature hands so like, up I was like homemade oh, oh Polish oh, eggnog <laughs> <laughs> explicit hands tags for everyone that's right. <laughs> For a night of debauchery. Hey, if you want to send in, uh, a, hey, your favorite moments so we can use them for the best of, hit contact at awesomecast.com or 724 25 ACAST is our Google Voice uh, voice line. Uh, 724 252 227. And again, usually we're here Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com or live.awesomecast.com same thing was that Get fixed? You the same place apparently it's fixed now oh, yes. all right, sweet thank you thank you rob for uh hooking that up uh <laughs> that's it uh, guys i'm sorg thank you to our awesome chat room they've been rocking it all night a lot of great questions a lot of great uh discussions and apparently an auction for an ipad or something no, um, no, 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 no that was not an auction for an ipad i was not <laughs> was attempting it was. to sell anything <laughs> i was not trying to rip anyone off by no. trying to sell them a 900 dollars ipad no it, it looked no. it looked like an auction <laughs> looks like so, it wasn't so then thanks you thanks to our awesome audience have an awesome week. Have an awesome week.
Uh-huh. I kind of figured, actually, I had a feeling because there was no guest lined up. And usually when there's no guest lined up this close to the show, it means that AJ is coming on. <laughs> um, you know, I was just kind of going with it. I was like, fuck it, we'll do this. Uh, old school style, since I think it's episode 80. Yes. Um, and then he DMs me like, hey, you got anybody for Mayhem show? I'm like, actually, what are you doing for both shows? So, yeah. so there you go. Oh. Hey. Blame Sorg. It was Sorg's fault. Sorg did it. It's my fault? Sorg did it. <laughs> but now he's not online, so I don't know what Sorg's that means. Sorg's fault. Blame him. He did it. What are you... Why, why? What's my fault? I don't know. I've had like two Cliff Bars to eat today, so uh, if I if I pass out, bear with me. Cliff Bars? <laughs> what is a Cliff Bar? Cliff Bars. Is that? Are you actually asking that question? Chachi, should is that a weird of me? Shame. There we go. So while you were gone, mm. Sorg said, "Oh, he has a rapper," and I said, "Of course he does. Hipsters always keep the paperwork." What does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> that means you're really covered when it comes to your taxes. And what's on fire? Oh, that's just the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the smoke in the basement, okay? I just see like this cloud of smoke coming up from Chachi's ankle. The basement's on fire. All right. Uh, let's Normal see. Tuesday stuff. <laughs> yes. So, Cliff Bar, this I have a uh, crunchy peanut butter Cliff Bar. Ooh. Oh, let me put this on you. Here you go. There you are. Oh, look at that. Oh, as in a cliff. Oh. 